welcome back to my PCDMS Tech Tip tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create your very own customized report window header. In a previous tutorial, we focused only on the cell with the PCDMS logo. Today, we'll explore some of the editing options available in the other cells. The topics I'd like to cover are understanding the default template, working with label templates, editing cells, and finally, using trace fields to enter variable data. So let's have a closer look at this default report window header and examine how each cell relates to information found in our edit window. So we'll first start by looking at part name, rev number, and serial number. So that should sound familiar to you because that's the information we add when we create a new part program. So you can see here, it's asking us for part name, rev number, and serial number. Revision and serial number are optional, part name is required. So if we do enter information there, you'll see that in our edit window up here at the top. So we can change that after the fact. I'll just show you. I'll just type in a new name here. And when I refresh my report, you can see how that information is plugged into that cell. That's because all three cells have a formula that relates the two from the edit window to the report window. The date and time are reading the windows date and time from the operating system. That's just a quick explanation of the default template. So now I'll show you how to edit this template using the label template editor. Okay, so before we open the label template editor, we first need to know the name of the template we wish to edit. The easiest way to do that is to just mouse over the report header and the tooltip will display the template name. So you can see there it's called file underscore header dot LBL. So that's the label template we'll be working with. To open the label template editor, from the menu bar we'll select file, reporting, edit, and label template. So let's give it a click. Okay, so let's first find our file, fileheader.lbl. There it is right there. So before we start editing, it's always a good idea to make a backup copy, just in case things go wrong and we want to start over or just reload the original template. Okay, so let's copy this and paste it. There we go. So there's our copy, just in case. And now let's open the original. Minimize the edit window. There we go. So there's our label template editor. So before I start creating my own custom template, I usually make a sketch of the template that I'm after. It just makes the process go a little smoother, a little more efficiently. So you can see my sketch here. Uh, I've added an extra row. I've included some custom information CMM operator for example and I've changed the company logo. Okay so let's get started. First thing I like to do give the header a single click and grab this handle here this little green box and just drag it down. Just gives us a larger canvas to work on. Um, so the next thing I'll do is add that extra row. So what we need to do is give, is give the header a single click then a right click and over here, you can see our grid control object is open. You'll notice the number of columns is seven, number of rows is two. So I'll leave it at seven columns, but I want to increase the rows to three. Then we'll just drag that handle down again. And there we go. So now we have three rows. The next thing I want to do is merge some of these cells and uh, edit some of the data. So let's focus on the logo section right now. So the first thing I'll do is unmerge these cells here. So this is actually two cells merged. And what I want to do ultimately is merge all three. So first step, right click, unmerge cells, and click apply, and then OK. So now we have three cells. So now I'll grab all three, right click again, and merge them. Apply, OK. There we go. So 
that's how you do it. So you have to unmerge them first and then merge all three. Okay, so let's uh, change the image again. So the cell type is image. We'll click select. And there's my company logo. I'll just give that a click. Apply and OK. So we've done this in an earlier tutorial, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. So now let's focus on the middle row. Uh, rev number, serial number, and stats count. I don't want any of that, so what I'll do is just delete the contents of those cells. They, they actually contain formulas. So the rev number, I'll just open that for you. So when the cell is blue, that means it's highlighted and ready for editing. To edit, we just right click. And you can see the cell expression there contains a formula. So that is related to the edit window. Any characters you type in, the rev space and the edit window will appear in the header in this location. So what I want to do is just delete it. So we'll get rid of all of this all the way across in each cell. So okay, so we're done. Those cells now contain no formulas or anything. What I want to do in the middle area, these two cells here, is to first merge them and then we'll use a trace field for operator entered information. In this case, CMM operator name. Okay, so let's grab all these here, right click, we'll merge the cells and we will change the font, so I'll just go with something a little different, Times New Roman with a size of 11, bold and OK. So the next thing I want to do is add an expression, so this cell will have a formula. So what I want to do, I'll type it out first. So it's the word trace field with a bracket one. So what that means is in my PC Demos program, I'll enter a trace field, prompting the operator to enter his name. The one in brackets means it's the first trace field of the program. So if we had more, then we would enter the second one with a two in the brackets and so forth. Okay, so let's click apply and okay. So you'll notice there's a number zero now because my PAR program does not yet have a trace field, so there's no data there. Uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, the next set. So let's merge these two cells. And here I just want text. I just want to type in my machine name. So we'll just keep this as text and it will always be in the header. So no matter what, it'll just appear like that. So I'll change the font again. I'll keep it consistent. Times New Roman again with height of 11. And you can also justify the cell. So I want to center this both horizontally and vertically. Looks good. Click apply and OK. So there you can see my text there and that's how it will always appear. So the top row I'll leave. I'll just leave part name, date and time as it is. You can always change the font, change the justification, the style but uh, I'll just leave that as is. Okay, so that leaves us with the bottom row. So if you look at my sketch here, what I want to do is just include our company slogan in there. So let's first merge the cells. Pick a font. So I'll pick something a little uh, fancy there. And a different style with a height of, uh, let's go with 9, just to make sure it all fits in there. Okay, so let's just type in the text here. There we go. So let's see how that looks. Looks okay. So you'll notice it's not centered vertically, so let's fix that. It turns blue, so we'll right click. And over here, we'll do vertical justification and centered horizontally as well. Apply and OK. OK, that looks a little bit better. So next thing I want to do is just to add a little bit of style to it. 
I'll do some background colors. So let's start with this bottom cell. Right click. So I'll just make it uh, say a light shade of gray. OK. Apply. And OK. So we're getting there. Next I'll do shading on the top cells. So I'll just do a group select here. Right click. And in this case I'll just go with a light yellow. OK. Apply. And OK. So the last thing I want to do is deal with, with the lines, the, uh, the borders, I should say. So you notice we're missing a border there. They're all different thicknesses and colors. So what I'll do is just highlight the entire template, right click, and we'll do the same line color. We'll make them all black. And OK. So we'll see how that looks. So we're still missing one line here on the right hand side. So let's just deal with that one on its own. So right click and you can see here that the line on the right is set to none. So I'll we'll just change that to thick, apply and OK. OK, so that looks OK. We'll just leave that for now and say that that's what we want. I mean, you can always refine it at a later time, but uh, we'll just move on here. Okay, so let's save that. We'll just go File, Save. And we'll just go back to our report window. Refresh and see how that looks. Okay, it looks good. So that's our new port header. And we just need to deal with the trace field now. So let's go back to our edit window. And what I'll do is put my cursor right after the tip command and enter a trace field. And this will appear in our header afterwards. So trace fields are found under insert, statistics command, trace field. So the name is will also appear in my header. So we type it the way we want to show it, CMM operator. So we don't need a colon, that will be put in automatically the value will be the prompt that the operator receives. So I'll just type it in now um, just to save running the program. So I'll just type my name there and click OK. So that is the trace field 1 that I plugged into that as a formula. OK, so let's go to our header and see if that worked. So refresh. Let's make that a little smaller. Good. So you can see now, every time I run this program, that prompt will appear and different operators can enter their name and that information is included in the report header. Okay, so there we go. Just a nice little tutorial on custom headers. I get this question all the time, so I finally got around to making a video on it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.